as you're going for a walk, it's not as if there's one part of your brain walking. It's a little bit more like if you were to take apart a video game or your TV and you see a whole bunch of wires. What happens is that the actual act of walking corresponds to a whole bunch of different parts of the brain working simultaneously and that's called parallel processing. Very few people when they train as an adult, let's say to relearn a movement or to or a person who's in pain who's trying to learn how to move again or an athlete, very few people really train the wi the respective wires in their context. Most people just look at the actual movement, let, whether it's tennis or whatever, and they just try to learn the movement. Nature doesn't do that. You know, nature does not take a child and teach him how to walk. I think if a physical therapist or a, some intellectual were to try to teach a baby how to walk, they probably do all kinds of exercises, like walking exercises. But nature doesn't do that. What uh, the uneducated parent does is just puts a baby on the ground and then the baby crawls. Well, during the process of crawling, they're developing one of the wires. And then after the baby gets really good at crawling, when that wire is developed, then they go on their hands and knees and then they creep. And then that develops another set of wires. And now at that point, they're using two sets of wires simultaneously in parallel. Then the baby goes to stand up and now they're using another set of wires simultaneously. But the baby couldn't have started off standing up. It just couldn't work that way. In the same way if you build a house, you, know, you first get the ground ready and then you build the foundation and then you do the frame and then the roof. So the order is critical and in order for the house to stand up you have to have all these parts working simultaneously. So what we did is we went through and studied the development in detail. Well, reflexes are the first set of wires. When the baby's first born, they move through reflexes. And if you look at the chart, reflexes are represented by the little red arc here. Information goes into the spinal cord and then back out. Every exercise that we do has a component that involves reflexes. For example, the bench press exercise, you know, let's say you're lifting 50 pounds or 20 pounds. Two of the pounds are being done automatically with the reflex. And that component is critical because that's the component that stabilizes your shoulders. Crawling corresponds in a simplified way to reflexes. So the reflex component of all movement is critical. It's for instance, your metabolism corresponds to the intensity that your brain is at. And reflexes involve your core muscles, which is related to posture, which is related to endurance, which is also related to a lower intensity. So any endurance athlete has already developed reflexes. That's why they become good at endurance. When it comes to stability and leverage, reflexes are critical because the core muscles which are controlled by reflexes those muscles are located adjacent to the joint so they control all the joints and there's something specific about the movements that isolate the core muscles the reflexes are controlled by the brain stem and if you don't have reflexes the brain stem has nothing to control and the reason the brain stem is so critical is because most of the popular medications people are taking, your brain should be producing if your reflexes are working. For instance, your brain controls reflexes using dopamine in the brainstem. Reflexes are what cause you to produce serotonin in the brainstem. So it's really fundamental that the reflex component exists for all your movements. And of course it's tied to efficiency. You know, the number one complaint people seem to be expressing is just fatigue. Well, the core reflexes are kind of like the idol in your body. It's like there's always a certain amount of tone in the reflexes. And in the same way a car just idles, it takes hardly any energy to just exist, to just be awake. And then when the car 
needs to go up a hill, then you'll floor it. But if your idol doesn't exist, you're constantly having to stimulate. But that's not sustainable, and so as a consequence, you're always going to be tired and needing more stimulants to stay awake. And this whole pattern is sort of par for the course, assuming that your reflexes are weak.